Huh? Hey everyone, and welcome to the Overland Podcast. Tony. Hey, buddy. You doing all right? I'm all right. Did you think I froze? Uh, well, you were real still. Yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't know. <laughs> welcome to the live recording of the Overland Podcast. You'll see us live on here right now, but uh, if you don't catch us live, if you weren't able to stop your day at 7 p.m. on a Tuesday and watch us live, then you can download it anytime on all podcast platforms under the Overland Podcast. Man, we've had a lot going on here lately. It has been know. it's been a crazy show. Um not this show, but like life in general as a show has been crazy. Um you have done some upgrades to uh you went to Oki Overland and and like got some stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to, to see it, man. I know. Come on. Trying, trying to get some awnings updated and stuff, and maybe some new walls and some of the like the OVS uh, awnings and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, that's that's pretty cool. You're going to OVS. They've really come. They've really stepped their game up. I'm really excited to see some stuff they got. Yeah, I am, and I'm I'm really kind of stoked to see how Arla upgrades her Jeep. She's looking at uh, making some changes to her. Uh, you know, just this the the Jeep itself for solo really? camping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's got like a, going without you. She wants yeah, to do more like, of that. Yeah, yeah. She's going to be going with the ladies, and and mm. she's got a ladies trip coming up. So wow, and that's something. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. um, I've we got a we got a trip coming up, uh, leaving Saturday. We're going to Tennessee for the week, and. Um, I got I got me an upgrade. I got me. An upgrade. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, because we're taking the we're taking the Subi, and um, hey babe, not thank you for hey. joining us, our number one fan being on here. Um, but we got uh the the cool little twenty liter Isco fridge that looks like a Zarge's box. It is so cool. I've never had a fridge that I could control with my phone. And I love that. You can well, turn mine, it off, on. You can turn it up, down, off, on. That's so cool. I love see, it. See, mine is supposed to do that. The, um, you know, my my. Um, Gala, good seat. My fridge is supposed to be able to connect. I mean, it's got an app and everything, but I can't keep it connected. For some reason, it won't stay. You know, Bluetooth connected. I don't know yeah. if it if it only likes one device at a time, but it won't. Anyway, well, um, we got several people that are joining us live on Instagram. We appreciate you being here. I'm watching that on my other screen over here. So if you see me look like this, I'm looking at Instagram because I got it on my screen. It's over here like this. Gotcha. Uh, Expedition right. trailers, and man, I could I could like live in that place. I want right. to work for them. That's like my dream job. I want to work for them one day. And uh, I think be all right. Be cool. Them or. That Texas outfit, it'd be all right. One or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what's what's going on? What you got going on? Is there well, going on? Uh, you know, we're just trying to make it through this week. Yeah. Uh, this is the last week before spring break. So, three more days, three more days, and we we're home free for nine days. And so, right. we're just trying to make it to that. Uh, I know you just came off a trip with go explore usa and yes. uh thank you michael, michael. yeah yep. michael wins the award every week for being the one that's farthest away that's the furthest I'm listener yeah so appreciate, appreciate his support michael, yep. uh, living in the place where the sun never goes down or never uh, so that's pretty cool oh my goodness expedition okay. trailers uh I, don't tempt me don't tempt me. They, they just commented. I guess they're listening. They said, "What's up, buddy? We'll need to upgrade that tax." Oh, oh dude. dude, that'd be all right. Mm, I could do that. I could do yeah. that. Um, yeah, Michael, appreciate you being here, um, and everybody else who's listening to the live recording of the Overland Podcast. Now we have 
we have some people in the background that we want to bring on real quick. Um, yep. One of the main things that we have been uh, trying to help promote and um, and get the word out, spread the word. Up seven eight seven thirty a.m. to eight thirty p.m. Uh, that's that's pretty good. Uh, it's it's like seven to six here right now, so yeah, it's not that big of a difference. Um, right. But the Jasper Jeep Jam that's going on in Jasper, Arkansas, it starts this week, and so we want to bring on to the stage. We have uh, one of the uh, people introduce them. Uh, this is uh, we have Lisa Duay with the uh, Jasper. Hey, Lisa. Uh, you pronounce it for me, Lisa. Jasper. Uh, Jeep Jam J Overlanding Rally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I was saying, what I was getting at oh. is the J, J Pack or something. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So my name is Lisa Duay, and I'm with Advertising and Promotion. So it's Jasper Advertising and Promotions Commission for there Jasper. There you go. So we call it J Pack because right. that's a whole mouthful, right? <laughs> right. It is. Yep. Yeah. So yep. we're excited that you guys asked us on tonight we have such an amazing event going on in jasper arkansas this weekend um we have a jeep jam and overlanding rally three jam-packed fun-filled days of things to do in jasper Ooh. arkansas right, right. <laughs> it's sounds like time, she's right? got some helpers back Who there like she got there with you or something so, right before you called and i'm glad you texted beforehand because i was very sidetracked because stacy buckner just showed up and so uh we were helping her put out all the beautiful flags that are waving over here yeah and, i saw misty uh, posted on that and yeah, yeah talking and visiting with her and uh showing her around the uh the event area here around the fairgrounds and just enjoying round top in the in the background as you can see and mm -hmm. We're, it's a gorgeous day. I know we're going to have a little bit of, of rain, maybe some weather on Thursday, but we've made preps for that, and we are ready. We are ready for this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's crunch time, right? It is crunch time. We have been so busy. Uh, ticket leaves have been keeping me busy. I mean, it's blowing up with tickets. In fact, we actually crashed it yesterday morning. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah, so uh, I had to call a <laughs> uh hot minutes on the phone with them getting it back up and going so um yeah we have um we have a lot of campers that are going to be staying the the duration of the event we have several people who are coming for the day uh we expect to double or easily triple in numbers on saturday um live entertainment every yes season. Uh, so we started out with, well, you know, we, maybe we should provide a band. So we said, what better band for this event and to represent Newton County, the Nuco band, right? So I called them mm. and they were like, absolutely. So then I thought, well, okay, that's Saturday night. What are we going to do Friday night after stories around the campfire? And, um, my husband was like, well, check out another band. So sure enough, Magnolia Brown signed up. So then we were uh, thinking, well, hey, let's bring in some locals for Thursday night for some entertainment. So we have a local guy. His name is Espen Elvis Daniels. He's a senior here at Jasper High School. Amazing guy. He's been uh, doing Elvis uh, rendition since he was three years old. Um, and he will be out here entertaining us for Thursday night, followed by our local band who is filled with um, sheriff's deputies and um Let's see, uh, some of them are um, EMTs and things like that. And they have joined us for um, the lineup of events for entertainers. So Seven South will be performing Thursday night as well. So we've quadrupled the number of uh, entertainers that we have here. So that That's was awesome. amazing. And our food trucks. So our mm. food trucks have expanded as well. So uh, Pappy Smashburger will be here. Hillbilly Slims will be here. Uh, Pop Queen's Popcorn, Shelly Best Fried Pies, The Wooden mm -hmm. Spoon. I mean, uh, Northwest Arkansas Italian Ice is showing up now. And I think there's one more out of Kingston that's coming. They're going to call me back tonight. And they're doing uh, frappes and specialty coffee. So I think we have hit it all around on that <laughs> i mean if you can't well, if just you can't stay frappe. fed with all of that it, it, it you're i don't know what to tell you i know right and then our yeah. class, like we've been so super blessed with people coming out and 
wanting to teach classes. So like Switchback Safety uh, donated their services to us. And that just, uh, it gets me, right? Yeah. Um, because they were like, this is your first event. We are doing so many classes. Uh, there's going to be four different levels of classes that he's doing. Um, sometimes he'll be doing two to three classes a day. Um, we have um, Overlander Radio doing their uh, classes in the ladies' lounge as well as the day we make. They're doing their classes here. I mean, y'all, it's amazing. It's amazing the amount of people who have donated their time and their efforts to make this happen because this event, the Jasper Jeep Jam and Overlanding Rally, was created in order to fundraise for the city of Jasper because I wanted a way and we wanted a way to be able to provide free events for the whole rest of the year for the entire city. So, and for visitors who come to visit. So like Sparks in the Parks, for instance, in the in July. So we're gonna have a massive fireworks display, vendors out there, food. We have two of our local headliner bands that are gonna be performing, that have performed in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, just amazing things that we want to provide and not charge a penny so these people can come with their families enjoy and celebrate america celebrate each other and celebrate the amazing place we live in the ozark mountains i mean come on what all right you? love it that's yeah, awesome for sure. so you, and and you've got stacy and misty with the day we make there with you right now right yes i do sorry for the yeah question. yeah um, no yeah, so um, I have Stacy Bugner here and uh, Misty's here. Pop in, say hey. Hey, hey, there's Misty. Hey, girl, oh, hey. She's running. She was, on, she's running. Miss Stacy Bugner. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Stacy, I can't wait to see your gladiator. Well, it's a, it's not a gladiator. I wish it was a gladiator, but it, it is just a four, uh, a four door uh, jail you are. Um, this is beautiful. Out okay. Here. All right. Yeah. I, I guess I was, I got it mixed up, but yeah, that's a, that's awesome. <laughs> I've never been to Arkansas. I've only been through it. And uh, I was really impressed with the, with the fairground and um, just being invited, man. This is a great way to get to know some more veterans, uh, get to know this part of the country and um, spread our mission. I'm yeah. Excited. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to meet everybody out here and 50% of the proceeds are going to go to uh, her mission. And uh, JPAC is also going to have a raffle that's 50-50. And um, we're also going to have a raffle for uh, Ladies Overlander Radio, your um, your um, nonprofit. nonprofit. Warriors Thank you. Wild. Warriors in the Wild. Um, and also, we were blessed um, with an amazing raffle. Okay. So I have this new friend who called the other day and um, said, hey, me and my wife were talking and we would like to donate an airplane ride over the Buffalo River for three people. Wow. Hats, t-shirts, stickers, everything. So that's, and that's a raffle? A raffle. Five dollars. Oh, dude. Right? Yeah, my daughter said she's going to beat all of you because she's dropping her whole paycheck in that bucket. <laughs> my skin's wow. crawling right now. That would be so fun. Yeah, so we have so much cool stuff. Like, uh, we have Game and Fish that came out here. You want to get a ducky yeah. out of the bag over there? I'm going to show you guys the ducks that they gave for our um, – I gave her one, so it's on her dash right here for our event. They said we wanted to go above and beyond, so you can't do Arkansas from Game and Fish without a mallard. A mallard. It's a mallard. That's it's a mallard. awesome. That's so fun. That's and cool. So they that and y'all, the door prizes are phenomenal. We have um, so like you you can not only do a raffle, but you get door prizes every day. So every vendor that's going to be out here is going to be donating a door prize, okay? And they're up to fifty to two hundred dollar prizes. So every vendor's donated. All the people in Jasper have been donating. Airbnbs, local business owners, friends, you name it, um, have really gone above and beyond for these raffle uh, for these door prizes. And anyone can do that, and that's free. You just come in, put your name in a bucket, and you get a chance to win. We'll draw every single night for different draw, uh, door prizes. So super wow. excited about that. That's, that's fantastic, Lisa. Yeah. That's so, awesome. I, to know who some of our vendors are, right? 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of yeah. course. Yeah. Who's some of your vendors? We have Overland Spices. Okay. Oki Overland. Right on. Steel Creek Trailers. Fireside yep. Cookies. Rugged Radios, which they're donating a radio for raffle with a charger and everything. And they're fixing up all of the crew with communications too, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They're giving us like five handheld radios and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be awesome. I told them to make nice. sure blue because my forerunner, I'm tricking it out inside with the baby blue. So I was like, make sure you give me a baby blue one. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Smoke and Crow is going to be here. Chaos Hill Audio. Um, PKV, we all love him. Steadfast Overland, LOT. I mean, the list goes on and on. Like, I would be here all night if I start. Yeah, all, but. Michael, Michael says, uh, heard there be an awesome knife in the door prizes. Right, I was just saying. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so PKV is donating an amazing knife with the sheath that he's going to make. He's also going to be here doing uh, demonstrations and showing you how he creates his knives. There's going to be a lot of people out here who are doing live demonstrations. So you're not just mm -hmm. coming to vend. You're actually getting to experience how they make and how they use their their products that they're selling or creating. So I think that's amazing. Um I know like Adventure Trail RV is going to be out here and they're going to have their uh, their showers, correct? Overland showers. Overland showers. So he's going to be mm -hmm. demonstrating that. Um, Steel Creek Trailers will be out here and he'll be demonstrating all his, you know, mods and the type of trailers that he has. Oh, speaking of mods, we are having a contest. But this is the fun thing. Okay, so we decided, we were thinking, let's do a contest for Overlanders. But then we were like, we don't want to be serious because we want this to be fun. So we have six awards going out for different overlanders. And we're not going to tell you what they are, but we have secret judges who are going out throughout the entire event. And on Saturday night, we're going to reveal all of those prizes. So all right. that is going to be super cool. So you don't know. So you could be a vendor being judged. You could be, you know, um, you know, a camper being judged. You could be a demonstrator. You could be a, a co-host. You never know. So, right on. yeah, right so we on. have a whole lot of really exciting things um, in here. But gosh, you know, I just can't say how blessed and how honored. And I don't even know what, the, not really shocked. It's just overwhelmed. I mean, I'm basically speechless over um, everything you've guys done to make this happen. You guys too, especially, you know, um, promoting the heck out of us and, uh, being behind us, Misty and Joe were the first ones to step up and say, we see good things and we believe in y'all and we want to make this happen. And it's like everyone followed suit and we, you know, we can't be us without you, without everyone. It takes a village. And I say this mm -hmm. all the time, we have the best village ever. So yeah. we are so proud. My husband's tearing up. So stop that. <laughs> his, uh, his allergies uh, be acting up. No. Right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome that's awesome well we're we're excited to get behind you on this i think it's going to be a great event uh tony's going to be up there representing us and yes. and i'm trying know i'm all these trying like heck to be there tomorrow night i got 24 hours to get ready and i got i got a project that i got to get finished tomorrow and it's going to be cutting it close so start packing yeah. tony start packing. Yeah. <laughs> start packing tony start packing tony, he'll be up all night time. If I have time to go home and throw some drawers in a bag, I'm sure you got time. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll have to find some yeah, somewhere. You can get it done. Yeah, well, who needs drawers? <laughs> we got a Dollar General down the road. We can hook you up. My you friend, got Dollar Generals up there? They got them. They got yeah. down in the Dollar yeah. Holler. So yeah, my friend with Paisley's sister, she's been an amazing sponsor with this whole event, y'all. I mean... From start to finish, she has been there in planning. She's the whole sponsor for the Ladies Overlander Lounge. I don't know where she's hiding because she drove up a while ago, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I don't know where she's hiding. Go that way. But she made all of these amazing shirts that you guys are going to uh, be getting camping with us with all of our patches on them. All of this, our, our patches made it. They are not overseas. Yay. We have them. They're gorgeous. Awesome. She has been phenomenal and she is here and she makes clothing and she sells clothing so if you're naked no fear <laughs> yeah Saying, don't ne worry ne go naked 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 and unafraid right naked and we will not yeah. be 
Right. The mannequin didn't. <laughs> yeah, awesome. the mannequin didn't even have pants till yesterday. Uh oh. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> well, embrace your feral and then get yeah. on up there and get it's some clothes. Your feral. You are That's right. right. Your feral. That's thing. right. Well, Lisa, thank you for coming on here and giving us an update. I'm <laughs> super excited that uh, uh, ticket. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Ticket leap. Ticket, ticket leap. Hey, ticket listen, leap. Go, go to jasperjeepjam.com. Yes, it's, it's scrolling yeah. across the bottom and has been the whole time you've been on yeah. here. So jasperjeepjam.com. I'm so, so happy that uh, that we broke uh, ticket leap yesterday. Yes, that we, hopefully we, that's just because of yeah, high traffic. Up. They were calling like, "How's the whole event sold out?" I'm like, "Oh no 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 no!" <laughs> <laughs> no don't do that to us. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't turn people away. Thank That's you right. guys so much, and we hope you have fun, and we uh, hope you have safe travels travels this weekend. We know you're headed. All right, up. all right. We'll yes, see you soon, Lisa. Thank you so much, Bye, guys. Have a good all night. Right. You too. Bye bye. Bye-bye. So everybody head on over to jasperjeepdam.com, or you can uh, get on any of their socials and check out um, the stuff. It is this Thursday through Saturday, March 14th through the 16th at the Newton County Fairgrounds in Jasper, Arkansas. So um, it starts a three day event. It has the prices on there, the daily rates, if you want to go for a day. Um, and then it has the schedule of events. But this that we have posted up here might be out of date now because she has already told us about a whole bunch of more stuff that they have added since they have started doing this. So that's, that's, right. that's pretty cool. Well, hey, we, we got her on there pretty quick, and we didn't even have a chance to uh, intro the show. So, hey, you are watching <laughs> the Overland Podcast. Here we go. Thank you for watching or listening to the Overland Podcast. We're excited to be here. We're coming to you live, as we do each week, bringing you the latest in all things outdoors and overlanding. The live show contains listeners so join us with your comments and questions here we go no pros just bros on this show here we go um so that's pretty cool that's coming up uh this thursday which is if you haven't been keeping up with your calendar tony the day after it's tomorrow damp. it's 36 so, hours dude um i don't know um, if you know this but you just got back from an event two days ago and you're I back two days I one know. day and then you're leaving again so i know got home i had work to do on both jeeps uh cleaning and packing i had about three inches of mud on my truck that i had to you know yeah air, air chisel some of that mud <laughs> off of there and some of that red uh ozark mud that you yeah. got on there yeah yeah, yeah. well let's talk, use about that. let's talk I had about to use... that because um i uh i was very interested in y'all going up there since um you know we we kind of had a little bit of a little bit of a surprise uh i guess about a month and a half ago when they posted the new mvum map so and y'all already mm -hmm. had the you already had the uh the, i think it was this the high watermark trail that y'all had done or was it a was it a different one well i think he called it the uh waterfall trip uh waterfall but i think okay. I, I, it did i think include parts part of, of it yeah parts of it yeah well i mean um water was high everywhere water was high uh, and, I, and i knew that the water trip. was high because yeah. where we had been you could tell that the rivers were rolling really good um you know we went down there uh i guess it was about three weeks ago uh, we went down there and camped at Woolham, which is part of the water high watermark trail where you cross the Buffalo yep. and uh, some guys, there was some, there was three Jeeps that came in and camped right next to us. And we happened to be walking by them and I asked them what they were doing. They said, we're doing the high watermark trail. We come up here every year. And I said, have you checked the water levels? You know, and then they weren't as high as they are now. Um, and he said, oh yeah, we come up here and do this. They were from Alabama, Mississippi area, I think. And, um, one of them, it was their very first trip. He had just got a brand new rooftop tent. And, uh, so when we left out that morning, we saw them lined up at the Buffalo and I thought, man, it's going to be all they want. And we ended up seeing them, uh, that next day we went down on the falling water road and we camped yeah. down there and they actually pulled up at the, at the campsite that we were in. We got there maybe two minutes before they did. Oh, and they wow. pulled up and I said, Hey, y'all are welcome to stay here. But they said, no, we'll go. And I asked him, I said, how was the Buffalo? And he's like, 
man, that's all I wanted. He said it came up over my hood and I'm lift, big tires, everything. And now I don't think it would be possible unless you had a, uh, you know, one of those earth roamers or whatever, but, uh, it's high. Water's high. Water's yeah, high. It, it was real high. We, we hit a couple of spots this weekend and had to backtrack. One of them, uh, was Saturday night camp. Uh, we were a quarter mile down there by that, uh, water crossing by car wash falls. Yeah. We were a quarter mile from camp and had to backtrack. It took 58 minutes to Goodness. Get, go wow. all the way around the back. So the I little mean, creek that runs into Big Piney was the one that y'all mm -hmm. were across, and it was—I yeah. bet it was rolling. Yeah, because yeah, you I, called me Thursday night because y'all actually had service, and I could hear the rain hitting the hitting the tent while we were on the phone together. Yeah, and I thought, yeah. oh man, I know it's going to be good for the waterfalls, but for the water crossing and the mud and things like that. Speaking of that, um, not only the water crossings, but the mud and the sliding kind of gave you an issue too, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It sure did. We were uh, just about done um, Friday with, uh, you know, kind of the roughest part of the trip. Uh, I say rough. I mean, just the more technical part of the trip. And um, there was a mud hole that, you know, we were we looked at it and there was a bypass, you know, so we were thinking we would. It was late in the day. We were going to try the bypass bypass and go around it, you know, and Brad went up it and went around but it was you know really slick and whenever i tried yeah. it i was right behind him and i tried it I, I went up you know and it's at an angle and i just slid down right sideways uh into a tree mm. you know a little tree it didn't do any damage to the truck but we had to winch the truck sideways the front and the rear I had to winch it sideways and then yeah. bring it back down um so Man. yeah that was the first you had time to do I a lot of winching uh, so, for the yeah. different vehicles didn't you uh, yeah interesting. yeah wow interesting Woo. i imagine that was uh now the weather during the day each day was really it was a really nice weekend uh but it, it was, did rain two of the nights which kind of complicated a few of the things yeah so, yeah yep. thursday and friday night you know i mean friday night we got to camp you know it was after dark and you know of course danielle had us you know fixed up with amazing food and everything yeah. but uh um, you know, right after we got to camp, we ate, got set up and it started raining. It was time to get in the tent. And I mean, my mind was going, I wasn't ready to go to bed, but, uh, my body was tired, you know? <laughs> and so I had service. And so I just started calling people I knew just see what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. When you get up there, you know, I always have, I don't know what people do and we should do a show on that. What do you do? when you're stuck in a tent, you know, because it happens to all of us, whether it's cold, whether it's weather or, or wind or whatever, you know, and you just don't have a place outside to go or you're not set up, uh, you know, to be out in the weather, or whatever, what do you do? Um, you know, I always have a couple books downloaded on my phone. Uh, my wife always has her Kindle. I always have a game that I don't have to have service with. Um, and I know everybody's got their own little thing that they do, but, um, uh, I, I just wonder what people do. That'd be interesting. Um, See, I was in a, I was sort of in a quandary there because I, you know, with my awning, I could put my awning out and we'd have a place to hang out and talk out of the rain. But, you know, a, it was sort of late and then mm -hmm. B we were going to be getting up early and moving on. So I'd be putting up a wet awning and stuff yeah. like that. So I just, I was like. Mm, I think I just yeah. want to go to bed. Sometimes it just ain't worth the trouble. No. no. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I totally so. get it. Uh, especially when, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it, it's tough to put up, tough to take down, especially when it's wet. And then you have to go home, put it all back up again, let it dry yeah. out. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you and I have that, I don't know, it's a little cloud that follows, follows around, follows us around anyway, like Linus on, peanuts because it seems like every time we camp it rains um and, to some uh, degree it's like, like bill and yeah. deb we're kind of like yeah. bill and deb you know that's every time right. they, they go somewhere it pours down rain but uh, uh well that's that's cool um i knew that it was going to be an interesting trip i knew it was going to be a good trip uh and i was happy for brad with go explore usa that he was actually able to get that um get that going because 
I knew that he had to cancel uh, the one mm -hmm. in February because of the ice and snow and, and making sure everybody got home okay and all that. But yeah, anyway, it's it's just one of those things where uh, I was really hoping that y'all had had a good trip. So yeah, I'm glad yeah, the, I'm glad it I'm glad it uh, threw you a curveball. It made it interesting. Yeah. Probably gonna have it, some good pictures come out of it. It did. Sure. That, yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I've still got to get a bunch of that stuff downloaded before in the next 24 hours before before I leave again. So. Yeah. But yeah, we we had uh you know an amazing time. The obstacles on on Friday were you know, they were pretty challenging for some of the folks, um mm -hmm. the attendees and they really really pushed their limits a little bit and and you know, you could tell, you know, they weren't quite sure if they you know, they they mm -hmm. were for sure, but you know, when the, at the end of the day when you get to camp and you're standing around the fire or whatever and they're they're talking about you know and with a smile on their face how much fun it was how much yeah. fun it ended up being yeah. in the moment it's stressful you know and you hear your your the bottom of your rig dragging on the rocks and stuff yeah. it's stressful but yeah you know then they're talking about hey well, you know what lift would be good for a gladiator and i'm like well, gotcha i got gotcha. i know this one i know the answer <laughs> to this one. <laughs> so what kind of rigs were there i i did see an fj cruiser i know your gladiator and and uh we know brad's Tacoma was there. What what else was there with you? Yeah, so uh, there was a another Gladiator, a red Rubicon Gladiator. There was another a Rubicon Jeep uh, Wrangler on 37s. There was another Gladiator, uh, Rubicon Gladiator. Um, great couple from Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. There was a uh, a kind of a stock Rubicon Wrangler from, I believe he was from Iowa. Um, another, there was another uh, JL um, Wrangler that was there. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't keep That's it. That's cool. How many, how many time. rigs in all do you like, remember? like seven rigs with uh yep. me and brad uh, it's probably eight rigs me and brad and then um eli with uh whatever mm -hmm. with wheels he's he's come on with as a uh like a tail gunner role um mm -hmm. trail spotter and assist recovery guy type type role uh he had his uh cherokee mm -hmm. so um two gladiators two three three jeeps and an fj cool. so six six clients and three so nine rigs i guess awesome awesome well, that's good well, i'm glad y'all had a good time now uh there's another uh you can check out um goexploreusa.com and he has a calendar on there of all the events that he's coming up whether it's going to be in the ozarks or washita's i know there's one coming up in may in the ozarks and yeah. there's going to be one in the washita's in fall yeah, so he, be one he of released, members he, yeah he released the may trip last week and it sold out in two hours that's awesome yeah yeah that's so he, i know he's got some uh like october november somewhere in there so yeah Get on there on the mailing list. Get on the notification list if you if you want to go. Yeah, um, go exploreusa.com. Sign up for the. Uh, I think he calls it a newsletter, um, and I think it's pretty much just an email. And uh, you'll be the first one to know about all the trips, uh, about when it's going to re release and things like that. Because his his stuff does sell out pretty quick. So yeah, uh, huge fan of Brad. Brad is a super good guy. Make sure uh, he knows his stuff. Um, he knows his routes and, um, you know, always provides a good time. And there's always people there that will help you. So if you're new to this, want to get out and try some trails, maybe do some things that you're not comfortable doing by yourself. Or if you're one of the people, the, one of the millions of people that posts on Facebook, hey, I'm coming to Arkansas for the weekend. I don't know where to go. Uh, could you recommend some trails? And nobody will ever tell you where to go because they don't do that. So don't ask um sign up for, sign up with brad and he'll take you and then you could save it and then you'll know exactly where to go the areas where to go things like that and uh it's the best way to do that so yeah uh, if you're not comfortable doing that by yourself do it with him and that's uh, right one of us will be there take some 
really cool pictures of your vehicle, cook some good food, and have some good time around the fire. So it's 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 always a good time. Danielle cooked the best jambalaya. Oh, good uh, grief! That she was sent us pictures of it and oh, tortured, good. tortured us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great. Um, I, anyway, now, sorry. I was not able to go on this on this one. Um, I was actually supposed to work all day Saturday, and then Thursday they canceled everything. And uh, so I still had to work Sunday morning, so I still wasn't able to go uh, on the on the whole trip. So my wife and I went down. We took a little day trip. Uh, had had to do some work on the FJ. Um, had to. I, I had been losing my throttle. Mm-hmm. Uh, 38,000 miles, I think, on it now, and I'd been losing my throttle on the last several long trips that we had taken. So I replaced the throttle body, replaced the uh, mass airflow sensor, and I wanted to get it out and test it out. Um, so uh, we took a little trip down to Hot Springs, and there's a place down there called Kara's Packing Company. Uh, and it's this one, this little old bitty mom and pop shop. I think it's a little fifth generation that they make their own different things um they've got brats they've got homemade hot dogs they've got uh boudin they've got steaks chicken oh, you went for the boudin boudin stuffed chicken uh they've oh, got every frog legs they got everything you can think of oh they can have the frog legs it right? was amazing yes. so yeah. uh we went down there and spent a ton of money and then we went to uh on the way down there i saw a, a big sign on the side of the road that said Clampett's Meat Market, largest meat market in Arkansas. And it's on Highway 7. So we just made a big loop, went by Clampett's. Now Clampett's is a smokehouse and then they also have oh oh my gosh, I could stay in there for hours. They had every kind of steak you could think of, fresh, never frozen. Um, they had oh, every kind of fish you could think of. They also had boudin and brats and, oh my goodness, we spent another fortune in there and filled up the fridge and brought a whole bunch of stuff home and packed the freezers. Um, so it was, it was fun and the FJ did flawless. I'm telling you, it ran better than it has in years. And I don't know what the deal is about, you know, doing just minor upgrades and stuff. And so anyway, well, hey, one of the sponsors of the show was on here, Jared is with steadfast overland and let me tell you i have been using Jarrett's stuff so if you go to steadfast overland on uh instagram and message yep. him or do whatever uh, he's got all kinds of men's grooming products beard oils and stuff like that and you know i wear a uniform every day and i have a little shelf right here where everything goes and all my my beard junk goes right there and it just makes it look awful so every morning i've been using jared's beard oil and it just makes me smell delicious I just oh smell nice delicious nice and i've been loving that <laughs> so it has been it has been something else now i've got several different um ones here and uh, this one here is a it's called the brawler beard oil so yeah does it in this and they're really nice yeah. this is called title holder and uh they they smell so one's like ooh, that smells like brute and uh <laughs> so he makes these out of like essential oils and stuff like that so really cool go to steadfast overland and check out him on instagram send him a message or, or just come or to he's gonna be there this weekend at he's, made, he's got hats he's got beanies he's got all the cool stuff so yeah come. he'll be there and he's got um, the best of of Valor. Yeah. Uh, that's you know he doesn't know it yet, but he's the newest sponsor of the show. So we'll need to let him know that. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, he lives, and I've got several. I'm excited. Nice. And, uh, nice. I can't wait. Uh, I, I, I asked him last night where I was at on the list, and he goes, it's after more. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so then, well, I got, then I got to look in at the inventory that he's bringing, which, by the way, if y'all are going to Jasper Jeep Jam, and you're looking for a knife, you better get over there before I do because I may we're get one quick. This I noticed that he had about 10 that he's bringing. Um, he's mm -hmm. got some that he, he doesn't have many left over that he had. Um, he can't make the, them fast the enough. Shows, They're selling like hotcakes. Yeah. Hmm? He, he's trying to build up some inventory to take to some of these shows. So that... He can't. He sells them too fast. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, you know, I bought a set of cleavers from him. And I... 
I was very hesitant on the mini cleaver. I'm telling you, I've never had a, a knife shaped like this. I wish I had it and I could show you. But um, the mini cleaver, I thought, yeah, it's cool. I don't think I'll ever use it. I've used that knife a ton. It's, really? it's the coolest thing. Now, See, I love it. I love it. Uh, now, I've got, yeah, I, I've got a chef's knife that I use almost every day. And I've cut everything in the house with it, including me. And so you got to be careful with these knives because they are so sharp. Oh, they're, there's, you know, they're sharp. There's razor sharp. And then there's like three levels above that is PKB, PKB sharp. sharp. I, mean, yeah. I, I got the opportunity to use one of those small cleavers a couple of weeks ago uh, on the shenanigans trip. Mm -hmm. And I was cutting potatoes just like it was just butter. And I was like, it's butter. Oh my you don't gosh, have to put any pressure on it. No. And he's bringing one that has the black patina on it that I want really with a, with a green and black handle. Green. Yeah. I like green. I mean, it's not snazberry, but it's, you know, it's fine. Yeah. That's true. Jared. Um, he will bring all the people to you because I don't know. If you, <laughs> I don't know if you've met Michael, but he's a talker. I mean, yeah. he can, he can talk his way out of anything. Uh, if he ever gets pulled over by the cops, no way he's getting a ticket. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 I don't think so. Well, I just want to share for just a minute. Um, I want to, I want to brag on my wife a little bit. Uh, a couple weeks, two weeks ago, two weekends ago, we went down to Southwest Arkansas to, um, Eagle Rock Loop. Now, if you've never been to the area around, I can't ever think of the name of it. <laughs> uh, what is Albert Pike? Yeah. Albert Pike. Albert Pike. Yeah. There you go. I was Albert say, Pike I is in Southwest Arkansas. It's it's not quite in the corner, but it's down there in the Washita's. Albert Pike has some of the most beautiful places to camp. There's water everywhere. And um, they have all these forest roads that you can go down, lots of places to camp, lots of waterfalls, um, places to see, things like that. So there's a loop down there. It's the longest loop in Arkansas. It's advertised on all trails. It's 26.2 miles. It's the exact mileage of a marathon. Okay. Um, so it's a three-day, two-night backpacking trip. Or you can stage some vehicles and skip the mountains. There's six big mountains that you could skip. We actually met some people down there from Texas who don't like mountains. Um, and they actually skipped the mountains. And we met them in Albert Pike and they were doing that. But um, we started out on Friday. We took, the, we took Friday off, got up at 3 o'clock in the morning, went and picked up another guy that I work with. Yeah, 3 o'clock in the morning. There's two that's of those. Gross. Day, you know, yeah, that's gross. That's gross. Ew. Um, and we went down there and uh, we got, it's it's pretty good ways from here. It's about 120 something miles from here. Oh, so wow. we picked up my buddy at 3.30. We were on the trail at 7. Now, you there's, there's three sections. There's three trails that they put into one. The Boy Scouts have built this and they have done a fantastic job. But um, you can you can do the easy part at the beginning. Then go up uh, a few hills on the second day and then do the mountains on the last day. Um, and that's what uh, Tim Ernst recommends because he says your pack is the lightest on the last day. Well, I got to thinking, OK, this is this is me. Um, the amount of food that we take is not substantial and I won't tell a difference in two to three pounds in my pack. I won't tell the difference. If it's if it's 19 pounds or 22 pounds, I won't tell the difference. I just know that it's about 20 pounds on my back. You know, you just can't tell. Yeah. You yeah. can't tell. Now, um, I have done such a good job. I, I want to pat myself on the back. I've done such a good job. The very first backpacking trip that I went on, my pack was 38 pounds. I had lost 52 pounds. I was 185 pounds soaking wet and I was carrying 38 pounds on my back. I don't know what percentage of weight that is like a third of your weight. I was or fourth of your weight. I was carrying on my back. I'm not good at math, but mm -hmm. it was, it about killed me. Yeah. Now um, I'm 185, a little bit more muscle. Um, and my pack was uh, 22 pounds with water. So I was, man, I shaved 16 pounds off my pack. 
So I was real excited about that. But let me tell you, my wife went with us and, you know, this is the hardest. And they say on all the things, be in shape for this. Don't go out there if you're not in shape. And uh, so I decided since I really can't tell three pounds in my pack, I, we wanted to do the mountains first. And she agreed. She's like mountains on the first day. So we get out, have to cross water and we go straight up straight up for number one go down straight up number two go down straight up number three go down six mountains we did 12 wow. miles of mountains on the first day 12 miles and we were tired uh, i'm gonna tell you we we're tired now there's some places up there that have beautiful overlooks um you see a lot of beautiful things it is it's a very popular trail. People, when we pulled them in the parking lot, there were people there from Mississippi, Texas, Louisiana. Very popular trail. But we did the mountains first. 12 miles, stopped at about mm, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. This was before the time changed. So it was it was fixing to start getting dark. It was going to get pretty cold that night. So we were, you know, sat around the fire for a little bit, got in our tents. And um, the next day we get up and we did 8 miles which was, um, you know, that makes 20 miles. And then we had a little over six miles to go. We ended up doing 27 miles. Uh, wow. I did seven miles on the last day. So, um, but we lost water over 25 times. We were crossing water. There was three times we had to, it was up to our knees. We had to change shoes, put on water shoes, wade across. But the rest of the time we were, finding rocks to stand on to get across the water and you know i'm, I'm not gonna lie we both fell in um oh, because wow. they were slippery you know wet feet all that stuff so uh, it was tough you, you couldn't in 22 pounds you couldn't carry enough water for three days so we didn't have you, to because there was you, water everywhere did you take I, your I, grill or what i did not take my grill i had a sawyer squeeze uh which is a little bitty um I thought it was right here, but it's just a little old thing that attaches to a smart water bottle. Okay. So I had two smart water bottles and um, I also had some tablets that you just put in water. And mm -hmm. after 30 minutes, you shake it up and after 30 minutes, it's ready to go. So I had a really great system with water. I filtered okay. one, filled the water back up that had the, the filter on it and I put a tablet in it. So that and by the time I got ready to get to that one, it would be ready. And uh, so it was so nice um, because we didn't have to carry a lot of water everywhere we went there was water this and I'm going to tell you you may not be into backpacking you may not be into walking but if you can get down there I'm I'm telling you I have lived in I've lived 47 years in Arkansas I've been to every corner almost every square inch of the Ozarks and Washita's and this was the most beautiful place I've been in this state. Wow. Everywhere you went, there's a place called the winding stairs on this trail. And it is like, it's like probably a quarter mile of just rock after rock, after rock, after rock, after rock. And it's nothing but a giant long waterfall. Um, the little Missouri wow. river runs completely through there. Um, Richard's been there. He, he and I talked about it when we got back. Um, but you follow water almost the whole way and you cross it and you go a little ways and you cross it again, you go a little ways and you cross it again. Almost every campsite was right on the water. You were right there where you could fish, filter water, just see the beautiful cliffs, everything. It was outrageously cool. I was um, so impressed. Um, and I was so impressed with my, wife i'm telling you this was so cool so you know i'm gonna tell on her a little bit i'm gonna tell on her a little bit the second day or maybe it was the first day first or second day she slipped off a rock and fell into water so both feet got wet i can't remember if it's the first or second day now i think it was the first day because we did all the mountains but she had on waterproof boots um 
and her boots filled up with water, which made them like boat anchors on her on her ankles. Yeah, but she kept up. She never got too far behind, and she was a trooper, and she did all twenty seven miles, and I could not be more excited. Oh, it was wow. so that's much awesome. Fun. I have a picture. It's a really cool picture of where we set up some sticks on the fire and I had her boots upside down to try to dry out over the fire. It was great. Uh, yeah. We, it's yeah the water first day right before like the it. biggest mountain. That's right. <laughs> when it happened. Um, now I had on, um, I didn't fall in until the last day. <laughs> I fell in the last day um, right after she did the second time. But uh, I had worked so hard to keep my feet dry. <laughs> but um, I had on hiking boots that actually are not waterproof. And if you have hiking boots that are not waterproof, they actually drain and dry instead of hold water. And so mine sloshed for about a mile. And after that, they were fine. So, um, yeah, Richard says, want to go and catch fresh trout for dinner, taking tuna packs for options. There, there's so many places to fish. Winding stairs is unreal. Uh, but... I, I just got to tell you, y'all got y'all need to get down to this area. There's so many people that's all about Ozarks this, Ozarks that, Ozarks this. And I know if you're into trails in your Jeep or Toyota or whatever, the the Washita's really don't have a whole lot to offer when that comes. But as far as beautiful scenery, water, all that stuff, this area is amazing. Uh, yeah, and she says smart wool for the wind, wet or dry. Um, smart wool socks, smart wool underwear, smart wool base layers. We had it all, and it was absolutely insane. Perfect. All of the wools? All the wools, smart wools, and it is, it's definitely smart. It's uh, it's so cool. Nice. But we, we um, so the second day, we did eight miles. We go through, um, we go on the last mountain, go down into Albert Pike, you know, Albert Pike was, um, I don't remember the, the year, but it's when the little Missouri flooded. There was a wall of water came down there and killed all those people. Oh, um, okay. I remember like that now. I forgot. 15 was... people that died. They were camped yeah. right on a, right in a little park right there on the side. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was, it was a, it was a tragedy and they closed that down and it's been closed ever since. Now they have it as day use, but you just camp in that, in that area anymore. But that's, that's kind of what Albert Pike's famous for. But this wow. Eagle Rock Loop is absolutely one of the most beautiful places that I've seen. There's waterfalls everywhere. There's uh, rivers everywhere. There's overlooks. It has everything. And um, I was very, very impressed with it. And I can't wait to go back. It was so yeah. much fun. Um, we got to uh, do a last... little bit of hiking this last weekend. And I'm, I don't know, I'm feeling, you know, hearing you talk about this and what we did last weekend is really kind of, you know, making, you know, challenge, making me feel like I need to challenge myself to myself to get in better shape and get out and do some of that. I tell you what, it is, um, it's, it's something where if you can broaden, um, the way that you are able to see, and you know, some people get out there for the thrill of it. Um, they get out there, um, you know, to see what their Jeep can go over, whatever. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I loved the outdoors. I love the views. I love to be able to see things like that. And this really, this really filled my cup. Um, yeah. yeah. Richard said it happened in 2010. And my wife says, um, you know, right after Albert Pike, we were probably 200 yards past Albert Pike. There's actually a place where water comes out of a rock and you don't even have to filter the water it's already filtered it comes it's a big solid stone with one little hole in it and there's water pouring out of it yeah. it had if you are into science and moss and things like that there were more types of moss i have ever seen in my life i have never seen uh things like this but if you're into science and stuff like that it will blow your mind uh i'm huge huge fan and when we had, we had been talking about doing this for a long time, um, but it's, you know, it just hadn't worked out until we just decided, you know, this is when we're going to do it. Lord blessed us with amazing weather. It didn't rain on us. We thought it was going to rain on a Sunday, um, but it was really nice, sunny. It was actually hot on Saturday. Um, yeah. And I agree. My wife says it's so neat to see what your body can do in the places it can take you. You mean you can you can survive out in the wilderness without a diesel heater? Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. And it's amazing how much body heat that you can produce in a tent, you know, with another person. Uh, you know, there was two of us in our tent and, and my tent is two people, one pound. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. two people, one pound. It is one of the lightest tents on the planet. You can see through it, but it got down to 30 degrees when we were in um, Big Bend and did the South Rim. It got down to 30 degrees and we did not get cold. It's, it's amazing how much uh, heat that your body will put out to keep you warm. Yeah, I mean, I read somewhere where your body puts off enough uh, thermal energy in like eight hours to boil a cup of water or something. Oh, I believe it. I, I mean, mean, I know mine does. But but if you, you know, when you think about it, you guys are done, uh, you come off a huge workout, you're, you got an internal fire still burning. Yeah. You know? and, then, and then when you put food in there, it's going to continue building heat and you get in a tent that's got a small space to it. Yeah. That's why that jet boil worked so well in my yeah. In my well, I actually I actually pulled space. your uh I did your trick on uh, Saturday morning. We woke up and everything was frozen. Yeah. And uh, so um, I actually had uh, Gia had uh, the jet boil stash. Yeah. Uh, it's what I gave her to bring, and we actually screwed that onto a bottle and lit it in the tent for just a minute. And I'm telling you, within 30 seconds, we were dying. It was yeah. so hot in there. It doesn't uh, so I had to long. get out and breathe. I mean, I was dying. It was so warm. So yeah, it works really good. It works really good. But yep. anyway, that place down there, I am so impressed with uh, the way that they keep it up. It was one of the best well-kept uh, trails that we have been on. And I bet we've done, gosh, I bet we've done a hundred trails in Arkansas. And this was one of the best well-kept. You cannot get lost um it is so beautiful and uh i would highly recommend it so put it on your list richard says he wants to go back with us and uh i hope i hope they're able to because i want to do it again um now it's getting pretty warm uh probably won't do it when it's warm if you try to do that trail when it's hot we talked to a guy who did it in june uh oh, and they goodness. actually they actually he brought some boy scouts out there in june and they ended up stopping on the trail base camping by uh, one of the deeper water holes and swam the whole time and then walked back. <laughs> I, bet. Uh, so, I mean, I can't blame you there. Can't blame yeah. you there. But it would be a good place to go in the summer because everywhere you go, there's water. And uh, you could just go to a swimming hole. But, you know, uh, that's one of the things I love about overlanding. It takes you to these places and then you're able to get out of your car and go. Yeah. see other things or get in a kayak or put on a backpack or whatever right. and uh that's one of the things i love about it but anyway it was incredible and i loved it absolutely loved it so sounds like it was a great trip it was it was so man let me tell you uh this has been a, a great time to be back uh you know we only do this once a week and um it's good to be back it's good to have my Logic Overland Coffee here. And yeah. I've been sleeping very well. And uh, we took a power nap right before the show. And I made me some coffee. And I think it worked. I think it nice. Worked. It's, it's good. You got your second I got, I got, uh, I got Muddy Mary and Canyon Craig watching over me back here. I and mean, uh, just, so you know, just so you know, um, Logic Overland, logicoverland.co, if you want to go and purchase some of the best coffee in the world. Uh, they are building a new facility which is uh, a block away from CB Adventure Supply. So if you go to CB, no. you'll be able to go down there. Um, right on. But they're doing really well because their coffee is so good. Got something new coming out this week. So be ready. Be prepared. It's coming. Nice. Nice. Really nice. Now, this next week uh, is spring break. Um, I don't know where y'all are going. I think you're going to try to do some camping next week. Um, yeah, we're just kind of camp. keeping it open a little bit. Yeah, we don't have any uh, anything set in stone. Um, next weekend, Arla is doing a women's trip Yeah, uh, with Jesse from um, – she, she runs with the Oki Overland crew. Mm -hmm. Uh, she put together women's trip, so the cool. following weekend she's going. But we we may try to get out just just us kids and see what. That's cool. See what well, we we're we're uh, we're loading up the Subaru and the dog, and we're heading to Tennessee. We're going to uh, do something a little different this time. We've got a 
we, we're going to go down and stay with Bryce and Danielle and see Brad down in Mississippi. And then we're going right. to head over to Teleco Plains, Tennessee, uh, do some things in the National Forest over there, and then come back and spend a couple of days in Lynchburg. Um, and I don't know if you know what's in Lynchburg, but uh, uh, lemonade. Yeah, we're going to do a <laughs> facility tour tasting deal over there. It's going to be real fun. And there, um, so uh, it's going to be fun. It, was there something else, or did I get the hit the nail on the head? Oh yeah, Jack Daniels is there, um, and I've toured Jack Daniels once. Gia never has, but I haven't done the tasting tour. Um, it is so fascinating. I th okay, I thought I thought you were getting ready to tell me there was the Lodge Cast Iron place there. Uh, that's in Pittsburgh, Tennessee, and we are stopping there on, on the, the way to Lynchburg. To Lynchburg, yes, <laughs> Lodge Cast Iron. Our Subaru may weigh 18 pounds when we come back. So, yeah, hey. we're going to stop there. And we're also going to go to George Dickel. So uh, I think that's going to be pretty fun. I, it, and it's like best of both worlds because Jack Daniels is humongous. And yeah. George Dickel is a little bitty. Yeah. And so it's it's going to be the best world. It's going to be cool. Right. But uh, right, right. that's going to be fun. Uh, so we got that coming up next week. And uh, hopefully on Tuesday, We'll have some Wi-Fi and we can get together and do the show, but uh, we'll see. If That'd not, we'll do it. Let's try it. Let's try hey, it. I hope everybody. So, hey, just real quick, two two plugs. Um, if you're going to Jasper Jeep Jam and you want uh, more, you want to know more information about the Go Explorer stuff, come by and see me. Mm -hmm. I've got patches while supplies last. The handout. Tell them, tell me, come by and tell me you heard it on the podcast and I uh, got you a patch. Sweet. Um, and then the other thing, while you're there, uh, it's, you know, we talk a lot about food. Mm -hmm. Shelly Beth's fried pies. Shelly Beth's fried pies is going to be there. Uh, handmade inside and out. And that's her backyard. So she yes. lives just right around the corner. I uh, know. And uh, she makes the best fried pie. I don't know which one's my favorite. Uh, the lemon is good. Um, the peach is good. I think the blackberry has to be my favorite. I've oh, never, I've wow. never tried any of the meat pies that she has. I think they would be pretty good, but they are all good. And I tell you one that'll blow your mind because I looked at it and I thought, I, I'm not going to try that, but she's got one that's a, it's, it's like a creamy raisin. And I thought, I don't know about that. But I no. tried one. It was it was good. It was good. Really? Yeah. She'll give see, you some see raisins are why I have trust issues. Really? Yeah, you know, yeah. The oatmeal raisin cookies because they look like chocolate chip cookies. Oatmeal raisin cookies are the best cookies ever. No, no, oh, yeah. No, especially no. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. Anyway. Well. Come by and see us. Get your be Shelly Best fried pies. Get your Shelly Best fried pies. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be living on Shelly Best fried pies and Logic Overland coffee all weekend. I get your own tea. Hey. Well, hey, get there on Thursday if you can't get there on Friday, and uh, <laughs> we shine. Liz. Oh, Benji says that's a, that's a big nope. Nope. Uh, oh man. <laughs> uh, until then, hope you have a. Wonderful rest of your week. Tomorrow's hump day. A couple of days is Friday. And then we got the weekend. Next week, spring break. Until then, have yourself a great week. Look out for number one. Don't step in number two. We're out. <laughs>